Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name's Dave. May the Schwartz be with you. Hey, did you know it's a great day to wear a watch? Let me get a watch on. It's a great day to wear a watch. <laughs> um, I am doing an update. So this is my kind of state of the collection, um, halfway, almost halfway through the year of 2020. You know, I just started kind of really getting into watches as far as collecting them as a big part of this YouTube channel um, starting in October of last year. That's when I did my first review. And so, I mean, let's just kind of get into it. The watch that started it all is this one right here, the Rokos R0139. And this is one of the most popular watches on my channel as far as reviews, still got it. And yeah, everything's still working good on it. And let's just kind of start from here and work our way all the way through. And now you'll notice that not all of the watches that I reviewed on this channel are in my watch collection or part of my rotation. And that's because I'm going through this kind of, let me buy it, let me try it. If I don't like it, I'll either sell it or you know, if I, if right out the box, it's not something I wanna keep, I'll return it. That's one of the beauties of Amazon. That's why you don't see all of the watches that are in my review. You know, Just to give you an example, there was a Panerai homage, which I don't have. I also had a Swatch uh, System 51 that I no longer have. So there's a couple different ones. And then honorable mentions, You know, I have some that I'll be selling. Um, this is a Peugeot dress watch here very minimalist and rose gold and i am thinking you know, i'll probably do a review on this one and while i have it posted up for sale I have on this little black nato with rose gold hardware pretty simple um the hollands which i need to do a review on this and pair it up with the parnas uh portuguese -er. so this one is up for sale I also have this watch I actually purchased because it was so inexpensive. And so I figured, hey, it's Swiss, you know, movement. Let me check it out. But this is the Sophos. I got it on Amazon for a very inexpensive price. It's just very basic. Um, and you can see the dial here. <clears throat> There's no minute indices, anything like that. No second hand, just very simple, very plain. But it does have a Swiss Ronda movement in it. The leather strap is surprisingly thick and padded. It's uh, not terrible, you know, stainless steel case and case back. Pretty good basic entry level watch, but not something I'm interested in keeping. So I'll be putting this up for sale as well. And then these two here I purchased um, also haven't done reviews on them. They're just watches I, I liked when I saw them online. I ended up buying two different ones. I got one in um, a silver style with this brown camel leather strap and then I have the black dial with the black leather strap and I just you know I thought I was gonna wear these watches more and I really just didn't I, I found myself reaching for other watches they're simple three-handed quartz movements they're not bad watches um, again kind of a minimalistic design uh, almost remind me of like the Breda hope I'm saying that right um, kind of look but just very simplistic clean watches and i'll post these up for sale as well and if they don't sell that's fine you know i'll probably give them away or just hang on to them it doesn't matter let's get back into this bad boy okay so we'll just start here this is and you'll notice my collection is very heavy on homage pieces i just like the look of a lot of very um popular luxury watches i mean for good reason they're really nice nicely designed uh, very aesthetically pleasing watches. And then if I can find a deal where I'm getting value for the price, just makes it a little easier for me to go down the homage path. Um, Cause it's a lot, it's a look of something that I like and I'm not paying a huge deal as far as premium to own it. Um, so I don't really see it as a loss. We'll get a bit into that later, uh, but this is an automatic. Um, it is an homage of the Blanc Pan Bathyscaphe. Bathyscaphe, hope I'm saying that right. You get a screw down crown, 100 meter water resistance. It did come on a stainless steel band that's actually pretty nice with a butterfly clasp, but I have put it on this silicone diving kind of strap. Um, I haven't done a review on this yet, but it's been getting some decent wrist time. I actually wore it earlier today when I went bike riding and uh, yeah, did great. I was able to use the bezel to time our bike ride. Um, so. One thing I will point out that I really do like about this watch is the date window matches the dial, which is just awesome. But we will do a full review in the future, so stick around for that. Next up, we have the Feist FM019. Now, if you've seen other videos on my channel, then you know that this is a watch that I had the first one I purchased, 
did reviews on and then had problems with the movement and eventually ended up dying. I reached out to Feist. They told me what the process was to get a new one. And so I ended up getting a second one. And so far, no issues with this one. I do not put this on my watch winding box. I just manually wind it, set the date and time just to be on the safe side in case it was something I did wrong as far as overwinding the last one. So AP Royal Oak homage doing great. This watch will always stay in my collection. Um, it is a replica of the Rolex Yachtmaster 2. But the reason that I'll keep this is because I won this in a giveaway from a fellow YouTuber, Brian. You should definitely check out his channel, which I'll link down in the description below. And he shipped this to me and it was part of a kind of controversial giveaway. And I did a review on it. And um, <laughs> this watch, I think it upsets a lot of people because obviously it's a replica. But the fact that it came from a fellow YouTuber and it's something that I won, um, it's always going to have a special place in my collection just for that very reason alone. So again, Brian, thank you so much, buddy. Next up is the Timex. This is just a very basic dress watch. This thing is super loud. You can see I have the crown pulled out because it's the only watch in my entire collection that you can hear outside the box. <laughs> I'm just, I'm kidding. You can't. But once I open it and you hear the ticking, you know that it is this watch, but it has that Calatrava Patek uh, kind of design to it, a shape with the case. Um, just very simple, but I like the blue leather strap and the blue, almost purple hued dial is just very nice. Um, this watch I actually put up for my first giveaway on my YouTube channel. But the uh, person that was selected, John E, he decided to, he would rather have the Amazon um, gift card. So I went ahead and sent that to him instead. So this, so this remained in the collection. All right. I just did my last watch review on this one here, the Belova um, 96K101. So retro reissue, very cool watch. Now you notice in that video, I had it on the mesh bracelet. And since then I did finally receive this blue suede leather strap has a racing uh, feel to it. I really like this strap and I have another one on the way, which I'm going to be doing a video with some strap swaps on this case and dial. Very cool, retro, funky design and look. I love it, but let's move on. All right. So you saw this in my last video that I did uh, just as a quick wristwatch check. This is the bearing ceramic and we have a three tone dial. We have obviously the baby blue or light blue that you see here with the white. And then this very dark blue, almost, I, I don't even, it's like in between navy and gray. It's really interesting. Colors may not show up directly here on this camera, but when I do the full review on this, I'll make sure that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It's a ceramic bezel, very, uh, very cool look design. I, again, reminiscent of the Patek. When we see the Nautilus homage here next to it, you can kind of see in similarity. This Now, obviously this bracelet does not taper in the same way, but the brushed and polished links kind of lead me to that Patek Nautilus feel. All right, so moving over here, we have the Briston Clubmaster um, in black with a white sandwich dial, uh, just a simple quartz, it has a Miyota quartz movement and um, white hands. And I put it on this NATO strap, so kind of cool and, and you know, interesting design from Briston, but we will do a review on that as well. And I got a really good deal on that watch. Uh, moving down, um, yeah, <laughs> one of the larger watches in my collection, the Infantry, which is an homage of the uh, BR0194, if I'm not mistaken, Bell & Ross homage. I've done a review on this. Um, I wear this a lot when I do any type of like shooting range stuff or sporting type of events. This is the watch that I'll usually have on my wrist because so I don't mind if it takes a beating or gets banged up. One of my favorite homages would be this one here, the Reef Tiger RGA3035. And this is an homage of the Blanc Palm 50 Fathoms, as you can see here. This also has a Seiko NH35 movement and just a really cool looking watch. True Super Luminova in the bezel, which is a double dome sapphire. Very cool, screw down crown, actual dive watch, sailcloth strap, just beautiful. I put on a butterfly clasp and I really enjoy this and it really should get more wrist time. Um, I think I'm going to try and make an effort to get this thing out more. Okay. 
Moving on to the Belova Precisionist. Very cool looking watch, definitely unique. And obviously that sweeping second hand is just buttery smooth. Awesome. I've done a review on this watch as well, which uh, all these I'm going to put links in the description so you can check them out if you haven't yet. And this is probably going to stay in my collection because I know it's not everyone's favorite as far as the design, but I happen to like the look of it. And obviously with the movement, it's just very cool. Okay, so moving on to the Lorio. Um, this is my Submariner homage and I really do like this watch. I haven't done a review on it yet. I guess if I had a complaint, it would be no pip on the bezel and the fact that it's not a ceramic bezel, but I'm not a diver. I'm not going to go diving with this watch, so I don't need to see it underwater in the dark. Um, but I like we get Sapphire Crystal. It is a 40 millimeter screw down crown. Just a lot of perks that go with it. And obviously the design, just classic, you know, Rolex homage can't go wrong. And I love it on this Dan Henry strap. Okay. The Rokos, um, yeah, second Rokos that I own in gold, sapphire crystal with this nice beveled edge. I've done a review on this as well. Um, automatic, just day date, simple, clean, very classy dress watch feel. Um, really enjoy this a lot. So the dial color is what gets me. Um, and this is probably gonna stay in my collection as well. Actually, you know what? Most of these are probably likely to stay in my collection. If any of my collection is just gonna get bigger, but I don't really see myself selling many of these. Uh, next up is the Lucian Picard, which is the Omega, you know, homage here and small second hand, which is really cool. And I didn't realize it, but I think there's an AR coating on this watch because the crystal always gives this kind of purplish blue hue. Um, so I don't know if that's anti-reflective coating, but it looks cool. And I have it right now on this alligator leather strap. It's a little weird, funky uh, look to it. And yeah, done a review on this as well, so check it out. Now here's another watch I obtained recently. This is a rotary. Um, I had done a video talking about elegant watch designs and then I ended up picking up the Orient, which let's just do these side by side. So I got the Orient and then I decided I saw this rotary, um, very almost reggae style watch. And I figured, okay, I'll pick it up because it was only like 20 bucks. So it needed a battery. Oh, cool. Uh, it needed to be cleaned up a little bit. Yeah, cool. Um, it's mineral crystal, but you know, very thin case, black leather, just elegant and classy. So it is now part of the collection. And I really like those blued hands. Now here is a vintage Timex. Uh, this is a Dyna Beat. I picked this up recently as well, so I haven't done the review. Um, interesting to note is the guy that sold it put it on a 20 millimeter strap, but this is a 19 millimeter spring bar, so I need to get a 19 millimeter nice, uh, maybe even vintage leather strap so I can throw it on here. This is large for a vintage watch. I think it's 37 or 38 millimeters. But what sold me on this was two things. The design, it almost reminded me of like carbon fiber, just the look of it. Um, even though it's a Timex, it says dial England. So I guess the dial was made or designed in England. The Arabic numerals really caught my eye, the domed crystal. And then the fact that we get that Dynabeat movement. So it's, you know, kind of like hybrid, I guess you would say. Um, I don't know a lot about these watches, but when I saw this one, I thought it looked really cool and I picked it up. The size being that I have seven inch wrists, I figured this wasn't gonna be too small for my taste. Um, and the condition of the case and everything was just really, really good. So I got a great deal on this watch and uh, I'll be doing a review on it as well. Moving down here, we have the Hollands. Uh, obviously this is a date just homage, uh, Rolex homage. This is part of my collection too. And just a really nice looking kind of classic watch in gold with the silver dial. Um, I only complain, you know, obviously I did a review on this as well. I wish it did have the 2X Cyclops. I may upgrade that in the future. That's a cool watch. Actually, surprisingly, it gets quite a bit of wrist time. Okay, the Frederic Constant um, Classics Index. This watch will always stay in my collection because it was my gift for my five-year wedding anniversary. My first Swiss made watch. Um, there's a lot of things, you know, Certina, a couple other companies out there, Hamilton, I could have uh, also gotten, but I feel like I was getting a lot of value for this Frederic Constant. I like the look of it. 
and obviously throwing it onto different straps give me some versatility. It did come on a bracelet. Done a review on this watch as well, so check that out if you haven't yet. And uh, yeah, let's move along. Now you'll notice I did have a gold Cartier tank homage. I didn't end up selling that. It was by Peugeot. Did a review on it. Um, but I still have the Santos XL 100 XL um, chronograph homage here by Jute or Gerarger. Um, man, this watch it, with the strap upgrade just looks really cool. Double deployment clasp, uh, butterfly uh, clasp, just very nice. And um, I think it's a really cool look. So here is one of my newer purchases. This is the Reef Tiger uh, from the Aurora Collection single deployant clasp. Very nice. I was kind of blown away as soon as I unboxed this watch. I call it the UFO watch because you can kind of see the shape of it here. It's just very interesting. Almost looks like the IWC where the case scoops up and outward. Uh, very cool and unique. <clears throat> this one being a chronograph. Um, 100 meter water resistance, sapphire, crystal. Uh, it's just a really cool watch. This caught my eye. I had to purchase it and Reef Tiger is a brand that I'm coming to really enjoy the watches that I've purchased from them. They, they seem to give a lot of bang for the buck. I'll do a review on this in the future. The Parnas, I mean, you've seen all types of videos on this around YouTube. Um, yeah, this is a Daytona homage and I have it here on this kind of Rolex style um, rubber strap and this is a really cool watch i did have it on my dan henry strap for a while but i'm rocking it on the rubber for now um yeah I, this watch gets worn quite a bit okay so next we have the guan chen which is the long jeans i don't know long name i can't even think of it right now but um this watch is surprisingly yeah a lot of bang for the buck on this as well and sapphire crystal really nice strap double deployment and i like this watch a lot it's kind of that mix between sporty and dressy and i think it's a lot of fun and so cool watch i can only wear it till 2030 then i'll have to buy a new one watch my video if you want to see what that's all about so the timex um, just a simple fairfield i think it's 41 millimeter we get into glow normally this will be on a nato here during spring and summer but i like the look of this brown leather kind of you know tapers down just a little bit and very cool watch so man this thing is a pretty versatile watch and then of course the orient you know this is where my collection has grown and just doing reviews this isn't where my collection is going to stay but it's definitely headed in the right direction for my taste and for my budget i feel like that you can find a lot of value in watches that you can enjoy. You don't have to spend a fortune. I understand those guys out there though that wanna save up and get their grail watch or save up and get a really nice Swiss watch or a couple of them, by all means, like I'm all for it. I totally get it. Um, for me though, I like options and I feel like this checks a lot of boxes for me. We got dive watches, vintage watches, dressy watches, automatics, quartz, funky, cool, unique, and then obviously just timeless designs. So I got a spread. I feel like if, as far as my quartz and automatics, this is where we're at. I will eventually get another watch box because this one is full and then we'll start working on digital watches and other cool, maybe obscure design watches. <laughs> Who knows where it's gonna go? But this is where we're at right now. It's a long video, I know, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, thanks for checking out the channel. If you haven't subscribed and joined the Schwartz Force, make sure you do that down below, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys at the next one. Take care.